Hello, in this session we'll discuss how to sue judges, magistrate, clerks, and commissioners. Things you need to know. As always in the child support system, there are officers of the court that are covered by what is called judicial immunity. If you want to sue any of these officers, judges, you have to overcome judicial Im immunity. Now, in this session, we will review two lawsuits, uh, one of which is done by, uh, was called Mr. Leon Cazol, but the real underlying case is called Parent versus New York, and another one by Bullock. And we will review these to determine the outcomes in terms of when you sue the agency. Now, in order to sue officers of the court and judges, you have to do what is called 42 USC 1983, and we'll talk more details about that, and you can file a lawsuit either in state or federal court. So what is judicial immunity? Well, there are two types of immun judicial immunity. There's absolute immunity or qualified immunity. Absolute immunity is where uh, a judge who's been confirmed for life, you cannot remove them or cannot file a lawsuit against them. And qualified immunity have certain criterias. Now, in order to sue an officer of the court, you have only two criterias, and that is, one, they must deprive you of a certain right secured by the Constitution or laws, federal or state, as well as the defendant must be acting in, under the color of law. Yes, under the color of state law. So here's a short quiz. A bankruptcy judge was created by the Act of 1978 called the Bankruptcy Laws, and a bankruptcy judge is appointed for 14-year terms. So here's the question. Is a bankruptcy judge covered by absolute immunity or qualified immunity? The answer is they're covered by qualified immunity, not absolute immunity, because a bankruptcy judge is not an Article III judge. Hello, my name is Chris. And in this session, we're going to talk about what are the techniques you should know if you were to sue judges, magistrates, and clerk in the child support program and how to protect your rights. As always, we cover our non-lawyer maxim. We're going to get a little bit more details as to the laws itself. And so here's the disclaimer. Okay. No state shall convert a liberty into a license or charge or fee thereof, as well as the practice of law cannot be licensed by state. As we review these cases, preview it as we're going to teach and show you what needs to be done. In other words, we're providing education. Also, we ask for your support of this channel. We bring you many videos and we ask for a small donation, uh, whether it's via PayPal or a cash app and, and any amount will will be enough for us at this point we'd like to thank all of you who've listened to us on our podcast yes the child support made simple also is available on podcast spotify amazon apple any of your favorite podcast if you haven't had an opportunity to see a video on our our channel called Father Father Lawsuit N1. Uh, you can check that video out as well. It goes along with what we're going to be discussing this, uh, this episode. So let's start off with first filing a lawsuit. The code 28 U.S. Code 1654 and it reads, in all courts of the United States parties may plead and conduct their own cases personally or by counsel by following the rules respectively and manage their cases. Yes, you can file your lawsuit without an attorney. Again, this is not an issue of whether you should have an attorney or not have an attorney, but the code allows you to file your own 1983 case. However, the courts cannot force you to use an attorney. The law says that even though it allows for you to have a right to have counsel, the courts cannot force you to have counsel. And that's the case law is State versus Penderville, as well as Moore versus State of Michigan. That is, if you were to file a 1983 case, the clerks and the justices cannot tell you, well, you need to have an attorney in order to do that. Again, that is false. We have a video called your right to access the court and win without an attorney. Uh, feel free to check that one out as well. So let's continue. 
Title 42, U.S. Code 1983, this is the statute that's used against government officials and judges and clerks to sue them for deprivation of your rights. And the first part of it reads is, every person who's under the color of any statute, ordinance, regulations, are subject to the citizens of the United States if you deprive them of your rights. The second piece of the code is, in any lawsuit brought by a plaintiff must prove that she has been deprived of a right secured by the Constitution and the laws. Those are the two things. And the defendants, which are the judges and clerks and magistrates, must be acting under the color of state law. So we have a template called The Color of Law. It's also another video you can check out as well for more as to what the color of law is. So let's look into this more. Many people on uh, in the media says, well, if you're going to sue a judge or any one of the officers of the court or law enforcement, you have to bring a federal 1983 case. That is not true. And we've said this on this channel over and over again. Justice Stephen delivered the opinion of the court it says that the federal system of government, our federal system, state, as well as federal courts, have jurisdiction over suits brought by 42 U.S.C. 1983. That is it. I've heard uh, news that says, well, you should have brought your case in the state court. You should have brought it. It doesn't matter. It's the 1983. It's the, it's the process that is more important, not, what, not the venue. And so in this case, Keith versus Haywood, they discussed that option. So what is important when you bring a 1983 case? It's jurisdiction and venue. That is, the courts must have jurisdiction, which is either state or federal, uh, to, to hear the matter as well as the venue. And that is called standing. As long as you have standing, you can bring a lawsuit. Now, what about the cost? Again, legal, legal strategies are, are not inexpensive. However, there's one remedy. You can file for what is called a poor person status. That is, the court grants you what is called a former papyrus. It's a statute. It's a status that says if you're unable to pay the fees of the court, then you can apply and have those fees waived. And that is 28 U.S.C. 1915, Section A1. And so it's an application that you put in when you file your lawsuit. Again, they can accept or deny that or grant that. So let's look at, for this video, uh, this presentation, we're going to review two case laws. There's many, but these two are what we call precedential. They, they set the premise for lawsuits. Now, this one's called Parent versus the state of New York. Uh, and in this one, in this episode, in this uh, lawsuit, they sued everyone. They sued the judges, the clerks, uh, the, the lawyers. Everyone was sued. And this highlight why we want to review this case is that, by the way, they did not win this case, but the reason why I use this is that this points to what you need, the elements you need for your court case. It's like anything else, correct? If you learn what not to do, then you end up learning what you should do. In that lawsuit, they talk about what's called a private individual liability. And it says this, a private individual may be subject to a 1983 liability if, she, if he or she willfully collaborate with an official state actor and to provide, deprive you of federal right. And there's an agreement between the state actor and the private party. The reason why I like this section is this applies to your employer. Let's take a couple of minutes and talk about this. You can sue your employer under a 1983 because why? They have agreements with the child support agency and the courts to deprive you of your hard-earned income. And the case law, one of them is, is Cambrella versus County of New York and Duars versus City of New York. So you can sue. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and start suing your employer because there's an income withholding order. There's 
better ways to do it. However, if you were terminated as a result of your inquiry regarding your income withholding order, well, this is a remedy for you. And we'll talk more about your employer as it relates to child support. So here's the statute 45 CFR 303.100. This is where the state child support agency is allowed to what is called issue income withholding orders. And this you can apply, as we said, a right to sue them under 1983. In this other scenario, you can use the case law Luger versus Edmondson. We did a video called The Five Lawsuits, in which we cover the different state actors you can sue for your child support case when you are deprived of your rights. We point out that the employer falls under that, so you can review the remaining uh, categories in which to bring a lawsuit against state officers. So now let's look at the Bullock case. Again, this is Northern District, and it's Sandalee Bullock versus the commissioner and the agency. This particular case focuses on bring a lawsuit against the county. So let's talk about this for a second, okay? You can sue judges, commissioners, and clerk, but also can you sue the county and the state? Well, in this lawsuit, they did that. They sued both the county defendants as well as the, the county itself, and they use part of the 1983 law called Monell versus the City Department of New York, and they call that the Monell case. And they use a specific stat, uh, specific case law called Ex Parte Young. Now you can review that; it's a little small on the screen, but that's okay. This we're bringing you to understand it, so you can sue the county under that statute. So let's talk about now that we know that we can sue judges, clerks, and the counties and county employees, well, how do you do that? Now, let's look at what is required in your lawsuit, in the writing of your lawsuit and drafting of your lawsuit. This, of course, is educational. Uh, you can review what are the elements of a lawsuit. So let's review what is called Federal Rule 8. This is very important. It states here that a complaint shall contain short plain statement of a claim showing that the pleader, which is the plaintiff, is entitled to relief under this procedure. Why is this important? I've talked to many people about they want to file a lawsuit against a judge or a magistrate, but then when I ask them, can you explain what happened, when it happened, and who did it to you? Many people say, well, I'm not sure. See, this is a requirement. You cannot just create what is called blanketed statements under Rule 8 also. Second, you need to demand relief. What is it you're asking in your lawsuit? You can't just say, well, I just want to sue and, you know, I just want to hurt them. That's not going to work. You need a specific relief. Okay. Now, generally, under Rule 8, if you were to, let's say, file a lawsuit and it's missing the key elements within the Rule 8, you are allowed at least one amendment. And the case law that follows the rules of, of uh, Civil Procedure 8 is Hudson versus R2s. The next rule that your lawsuit should have is called Procedural Rule 10. It requires a plaintiff in the complaint to have numbered paragraph which should recite as practical and identify a single circumstance. Yes, that is. You cannot write in your lawsuit, well, I came to court and the judge just violated my rights the whole time I was in the room. That is not sufficient for your lawsuit. And if you have that as you're writing your lawsuit, you need to break it down, what is called single set of circumstances. And you can give plenty of example of that, such as uh, I asked for a motion uh, to, con to, to continue the case, and the judge denied that motion. Again, specific. Now, unfortunately, under Rule 10, if the court feels that you have not detailed 
your grievances in the lawsuit, the court has the authority, what is called sua sponte, to dismiss your complaint or strike that part of the complaint for redundancy or it's immaterial. Many of the lawsuits that, in my opinion, that many men who filed and have been denied is under Rule 10. Many thinks that, well, it's because you filed in federal court as opposed to state court. It's far from the truth. It has to do with this section, Rule 10. You have to pay attention to Rule 10. You must have a clear, specific incident, and it must be recited in the simplest term possible. So next, we're at this level. We have the judicial immunity that you have to overcome while you're filing your lawsuit. And you have to defeat what is called motion to dismiss. The defendants, which are the, the judges, commissioners, will use what is called motion to dismiss. Now, at this part of the video, I'm going to appeal to the audience and all of our subscribers and thank for subscribing. I will continue the rest of discussion about lawsuit, but I'm asking for a major cooperation from you. I'm asking to subscribe to the channel, and I want to get the subscription up. Yes, I am plugging this information. This is important. There are 13 million child support cases that are active in 20, 20, 2019. That was the last time they compiled the data. The channel, I want everyone to have this information. So, I'm putting it out there. Increase the subscribership, increase the, uh, uh, increase the likes, whether it's on the podcast or on this YouTube channel, and I will continue discussing the rest of this in a section part two. Now, many, are gonna see, many of you are going to say, oh, he's just trying to, to get views, and he just want to you know, blow up the channel. The answer is yes, because this is important information. Many of you out there, many men who are on child support, you are suffering underneath the increase in income withholding as well as they are taking half of your paycheck. If all it takes is for you to subscribe, whether you like or dislike my channel, is just subscribe to the channel where I can continue the rest of this discussion that this may help in some way to provide your remedy, then this is what I'm asking for. Also, uh, feel free to, to support this channel. Uh, I accept donations, uh, whether via PayPal or Cash App. And as a reminder, we also have this on podcast as well. So uh, I repeat that I'm looking for, uh, you know, increase of subscribership. As you know, there's the maxim of law that says, ignorance of the law is not a defense. And that case law is State versus Miller. That is, if you're attempting to sue judges and magistrate, you have to know the rules and the law. And this brings us to the end. And thank you for joining us.